Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. Hope you're having a nice day. What we want to talk about today is microbial populations. Like I said in one of my videos I was going to talk about. And dissimilatory denitrification occurring in zones having a small amount of oxygen. One of the nice things about facultative anaerobic bacteria that reside in the BCB baskets along with the aquarium substrate like that of a plenum, they are capable of living in areas containing little or no dissolved oxygen. In other words, they are demorphic in nature. They are enormously more eff efficient than the microbes living in anaerobic zones. And this is a very great value since the BCB baskets along with plenums can easily be kept in an anoxic state for the reason that excess bulk water nitrate levels can potentially be controlled because of microbes actively strive to stay in equilibrium with the available food stuff. You know, let me give this an example for, okay? If the majority of the substrate, let's say you're using a, a plenum or a BCB basket, becomes anaerobic for some reason, Ammonia is the denitrification byproduct, not nitrogen gas. Hence, another nitrogen compound of more significance is resulting. Yes, it would be fair to say from the studies conducted that when an anoxic system is created, the depth of its anoxic zone is then extended and insured. The potential is now greater for increasing Astronomically, the number of facultative anaerobic heterotrophs due to the substrate and basket configuration. So, as you notice, you have to make a correct environment for certain bacteria to live. I just saw a Reddit article on like 11 different aquariums. They were all saltwater. And they found out that they did have some bacteria in common but some of them have bacteria that the others did not have. And that's very common with people's aquariums, that no two aquariums may even have the same exact same bacteria in it. Some may have more and some may have less. This would explain the success rate of some people being more successful than others because they could be utilizing bacteria that could be beneficial to them and not harmful to them, as when you do make a BCB basket or a plenum. You know, and this is something that all ha hobbyists have to remember, that oxygen penetration becomes less and less with depth of a substrate. It decreases for two reasons, microbial metabolism and subsequent biochemical processes. Diffusion is very effective process over a short distance. However, it does have its limitations. And that is something that when people make a deep sand bed, I think they must realize diffusion is going go, only going to go so far. And therefore, what do they have to do? They have to use a lot of plants. But not everybody out there wants to use a lot of plants. It's, uh, they may want a tank with nothing but artificial plants. They're easier to take care of and it's, well, it's less work. They buy the plants and they last forever. Hey, I've used artificial plants in my aquariums for years and years and years. And I've enjoyed the hobby quite a lot because of that. So you can't blame someone who says, I don't want real plants, I want artificial plants. But it seems like we don't cater to those people. And the only time you cater to those people, a lot of those people then will have bare bottom aquariums and they will be using sponge filters and a hang on the back filter with nothing but fish in it. And what people don't understand when they put their substrate at the bottom of an aquarium is differential pressures exist across gradients. Ion displacement, differential pressures, exist when there is an association with carbon dioxide removal. 
if there is a substrate producing some carbon dioxide, like that of, let's for example, kitty litter, or oil dry, or one of them, those products, and laterite, which the laterite itself is basically like kitty litter. You know, it has a crystalline structure, but it's high in iron. And of course, we can use other products today that are high in iron. It then becomes a factor in increasing anoxic conditions. The addition of anion producers such as microbial or aggregated or both needs to produce enough oxygen to encourage or attract carbon dioxide and that will then get cantons moving, releasing the oxygen and consequently making the substrate to go more aerobic. Also, Carbon availability for audiotrophs are those bacteria that utilize light and carbon dioxide to carry out their biological processes and can quickly use an abundance of inorganic carbon. Heterotrophs are mostly responsible for breaking down organic matter and thrive in areas where diffusion abounds and where organic carbon is well cycled. Therefore, like I explained to you about redox, High redox means you have oxidizers, and I've explained that. It is also a fact that uh, mediating biochemical transformation, proteins and enzymes, and genetic carbons show a common reliance on specific ratios called the red field ratio of carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. It could then be said organic carbon is a major player in how well inorganic nutrients, example nitrogen and phosphorus, are utilized. Evidence also suggests that when heterotrophic bacteria exist at below their full degree or extend by both organic carbon and mineral nutrients, they have a negative impact on their trophic neighbors in the microbial food network. In other words, if they suffer, it appears to neg negatively affect neighboring processes. Nevertheless, nitrogen is generally the primary limiting nutrient in our systems because it controls the rate of primary production. If the system is supplied with high levels of nitrogen, then algae blooms will generally occur. Now, understanding that, means you have to utilize the correct bacteria in our aquariums. Which, by the way, for years, we've been told that the nitrogen cycle only gets completed with nitrosomatis or nitrosomaria. And as we know, it doesn't get completed with just those two bacteria. So the microbial population that we are looking for has to be adverse and has to be something that could be utilized under the correct condition. Now, this doesn't mean that these fasciitated bacteria do not exist in your aquarium right now. Just like anaerobic, heterotrophic, fasciitated bacteria exist in your mouth, for example. But in our aquariums, they may be in too low a numbers to make a uh, impact on the aquarium itself to finish the nitrogen cycle. So this is why people with different aquariums may have a lot different bacteria growing. They may have a, a lot of bacteria that is the same, but then again, they may have a lot of bacteria that's showing up that doesn't exist in the other aquariums because they are making a environment that favors those bacteria over the aquariums that don't. And that's what manufacturers have been trying to do with products out there, such as uh, sintered glass products and stuff like that, that are being made, is to have uh, live rock, for example, is another thing, a, a good example, is that it has all these pores in it and supposedly the oxygen levels will get low into an anoxic state and therefore try to utilize the nitrogen being made and phosphates 
that are being produced in the saltwater aquarium. That's why live rock, for example, became so popular versus uh, that of a wet dry filter, which became very unpopular very quickly, you could say. And it died out because it was a, what people would say, a nitrate producer. Yes, it handled ammonia very quickly, 30% faster than any other filtration system out there. But don't forget, ammonia uh, becomes another byproduct of nitrites, and that becomes another byproduct of nitrates. And therefore, they got the name as nitrate factories because basically people got irritated, especially with salt water, that these uh, uh, wet dry filters were producing so much nitrate so quickly that uh, nothing was left except for a nice food for algae, as I explained to you. So the microbial population of which exists in our aquariums is very important, but it's never really stressed very much, is it? It's basically, if, if you're new, you get a sponge filter or, or you put your sand or your dirt directly at the bottom of the aquarium. You get a lot of plants, uh, uh, not thinking that uh, your aquarium is electrically charged. And therefore, you're not worried about that if there's these charges that, you know, negative and positive charges that happen in our aquarium. We, we don't even think about that. It's not even talked about. It's basically just talked about that uh, you need a biological filter and you need a lot of it to take care of, you know, your aquarium. And of course, the biggest way of making biological filters, as we all know, is through the substrate. But you have to have something to increase the microbial population somehow. And that's always been the problem, where um, if you lack that, you're going to have to utilize other sources to take care of your algae. And that usually becomes the problem in most aquariums. If you cannot utilize the microbial population correctly, like create anoxic conditions and not anaerobic conditions that make more ammonia, you have a problem in your aquarium. Now, yes, you're always going to find the person who's going to use uh, sand or dirt or whatever, and they're always going to be successful. You're always going to have that. Okay, and you're even going to have the person who is going to maybe make a plenum and, and a BCB basket and say, well, it didn't work for me the way I thought it would, because there is no system that's absolutely perfect. And <clears throat> was it made right? Was it done wrong? Uh, I don't know. You know, that there's, because anytime I, like I said, anytime I've used sand myself, and put it at the bottom of the aquarium, I've never been successful. I've always, always come up with a big cyanobacteria problem or algae problem. And I've talked to others, and they said the same thing, you know. But then I have made tanks, and I'll admit, that done very well. And there was no problem at all. But the odds were always more against me if I did not utilize a plenum, especially when it came to fish like goldfish and things like that. It just, it just the odds were too much against me. And uh, most tanks that I did would fail. I, I think it was like one out of four were good. But my success rate trying to control the bacteria that was in my aquarium was a lot better if I made the correct environment. And I guess that's what we, we have to think about is the correct environment that needs to be made for the bacteria that we want to utilize to do the work we want it to do. And basically, that's what I'm saying here in this video, that we have to create an environment for the bacteria we want. So, you know, I mean, you can always use plants. 
you can always fill up your aquarium full of plants, a ton of plants. And uh, if that appeals to you, then that's fine. Uh, aquariums that seem to have a lot of plants, they can do very well. And uh, a lot of people are using a lot of plants plus dirt as a uh, substrate fertilizer to feed the plants. And they've been very successful on it. But some people, like as the picture you like you see here, uh, just use a plenum and uh, have very good plants. Or you may take a tank like you see here. The plants are artificial. And the plenum with bacteria is doing everything. So you don't really have to worry about are my plants living, dying? Am I fertilizing them enough? If I'm not fertilizing them enough, uh, you don't have to worry about any of that because the bacteria are growing in the substrate that you need, all the bacteria that you need. And this also eliminates the use of, especially if you have fish, like live rock. So anyhow, that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to bring up is that uh, why some people have a different microbial population than others. And that's the reason why they have the environment to utilize and grow those bacteria. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping and happy New Year's to you.